And that's where, you know, I, after a bit of therapy, I can tell you that uh, it's a hard thing to do because it, it's scary. It's scary yeah. to, to sit down and say to yourself, am I happier with you or without you? Mm -hmm. And we deal with that a lot in the film industry because we, we tend to leave for three months at a time and go on location. And, and we tried to have a rule to not go more than two to three weeks without seeing each other. Right. But oftentimes, if my wife's off working, which she is a lot, and, and I'm working, um, you kind of ask the other person to, to be okay by themselves. Yeah. And to sort of do whatever they need to do in order to get through this time. And, and it usually means that they, they, they just have to, they have to learn how to be without you. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you come back into a relationship and, and they're mad in a way, not, yeah. not like a cat because you left, you know, they're going to diss you, but they're mad that you've asked them to be this person while you were gone. And now you can't just expect me to flip and be the other person that we yeah. are in the relationship. So, so it's a tricky balance there, but it, it, the communication is the key, you know, and the, and the communication of uh, the things that you have in common and that you share and prioritizing those things that you have in common, uh, along with prioritizing the things that you individually need to do. And, and the other person needs to be secure in themselves. Yeah. Oftentimes, right, in the couple, the, the one person doesn't doesn't feel secure when mm -hmm. there's distance from the couple and, and they're afraid that they're not loved. No, I find with my wife that the more space I give her, the more she loves me. Yeah. So that's, that's uh, yeah, you know, at first I went, really? You're happy when I'm not around and she <laughs> uh, can do my things and then, you know, and then it'll be good when you come back, bring some new stuff that we can share together, you know, and then reach yeah. the relationship that way. So it's a funny balance. I don't know if I answered your question. Oh, you, you answered a, a better question that I should have asked you. Uh, it's a really interesting uh, perspective. Um, I, I, I've been married for uh, uh, just over 14 years at this point. Um, and, uh, and I was married previously for about 14 years. Uh, and and I still am. Uh, I like to hear that after thirty years, you're still working on the relationship and your role in it. And because uh, I find it, it it just keeps coming up that, that maybe I learned when when I was a child or an adolescent, in the in the face of strong emotions, just to I, I just shut down. I can't deal with strong emotions. The next day I can talk about it, but that waiting for the next day for my wife is torture. She yes. thinks I don't care. I, I'm not interested in her. Uh, and so I'm trying to learn how to come forward and say, I understand what you're saying. Uh, you're absolutely right. We need to talk about this. I I'm just a little frozen up right now. Can you give me an hour? Can you give me two hours or a night or something like that? Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting you say that because I have that same delayed reaction. Mm -hmm. When something comes down, especially if it's if it's hot, you know, and it's like yeah. an argument loud, I just shut down. I don't, I, I don't have it in me to I don't know what it is I well I know what it is because you know I was raised with you know we're always smiling we're always you know an Italian family that sweeps stuff under under the rug and, yeah. and doesn't really deal with stuff and and everything is let's make nice nice and have a nice meal let's not talk about sad things at the <laughs> dinner table yeah you know that's where I came from so uh it has a lot to do with your parents and how how you yeah. are raised, yeah. Do you have any opinion about movies someone could watch if they're going through a breakup? Uh, do you think they should watch comedies to 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 let go some of uh, of some of the low blue moods, or should they watch sad movies to sort of wallow in it and have some sort of cath cathartic yeah. effect, or any anything else you might think of? I personally like to do both. If you're like me and it, and it's hard to get to the root of the emotion. Um, I watch a movie like It's a Wonderful Life, which gets me every time. Right. Yeah. And by the end, I'm like, oh, look at all the nice thing this guy tried to do, and they screwed him over. That's just like our government right now, you know. Right. It's like, 
here, you know, we're trying to do these things. And then the greedy people are coming in to take over and, and, and take our town and, and have a good cry about that. I love that movie to do that. But, but also, I love movies like uh, Jerry Maguire, mm-hmm. you know, to, to just like get going and, and lift my spirit up. It always cheers me up to watch that movie. Notting Hill always cheers, mm-hmm. you know, cheers me up. My best friend's wedding always cheers me up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to be sad, Magnolia. Wow. Yeah. Kramer versus Kramer. That's mm-hmm. an amazing movie from the 80s, you know. Kramer yeah, yeah. Kramer. For me, both, you know. All right. What else is on the horizon for you? What's the, the next big project? Uh, what's the next big thing coming up for you? I, you know, I wish I knew. I, <laughs> you know, we <clears throat> after all this time, we're always freelance. And uh, Jessica Swale uh, may be doing another film right away. <clears throat> and she would love to have me. And it would be great if uh, I think it's going to shoot in, in, in England. Mm-hmm. So that would be nice. I'm also up for another film that uh, with, with another uh, lovely director. I don't want to say much about it. I don't want to jinx it. That one shoots in Belgium. Mm-hmm. It's a more contemporary story about... Uh, about all the immigrants coming into Europe, you know, and uh, yeah. relationships between the Europeans and which is such an amazing subject right now. And it's so mm-hmm. contemporary. It seems like so much of uh, Africa and, and places that are down and out and war zones are going into Europe and it's creating this big divide between the, the, the right wing of the Europeans and, mm-hmm. and the ones who are, trying to just help and, and, and have people not starve to death. You know, it's, it's a big deal. So it's, it's a great story. We'll see, you know, you always hope that a good story will come through so that we can show it right, have an audience have the, the impact of what you're trying to say and then uh, and make it worthwhile, you know, hopefully do something that helps. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that- that that sounds like a even even with the uncertainty of it, it sounds like a, a some great options coming your way, hopefully. And yeah, hopefully. fingers and everything else. If any directors are watching, here I am. <laughs> I'm available. That's great. Uh, where can people find out more information about you, Julio, if they if they're interested? Well, if you yeah, if you want to see some of my stuff, it, it's it's my name, JuliaMacat.com. I have a, a website there with uh, with clips from different movies, but it's a lot of personalities are important, you know, and, and, and I find that when I have interviews with directors, um, the people you want to work with are the people who are, you know, okay with themselves and, and, and not, uh, not ego driven and uh, kind of cutting through the bullshit of, of presenting something that you're not. Yeah. so important in relationships you know because in a relationship you're always presenting the best side of you yeah and then you know it takes six months to a year to really figure out what, what the <laughs> right. person you're with is really like so i mean i think i think to be honest and to be communicative and i i think that that kind of puts a certain aura about you that attracts other people like that mm-hmm. Yeah. And and it's appreciated when when you kind of cut to the chase and don't don't, you know, just pretend right with all this makeup and with all the stuff that, oh, look how shiny I am. You know? Right. I, I, I like I like to use the 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 the, the movies as, as a way to reach an audience. I wish more people would go to the movies, but you know, more people are watching at home and and mm-hmm. um I, I I enjoy it so much. I love it. I, you know, I've I've had the the funniest times, uh, the most embarrassing moments on movie sets. You know, uh, can I tell you about that? That's kind of silly. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd love to hear about it. <laughs> so I was. It was the second movie I did with Chris Columbus. It was called Only the Lonely, mm-hmm. with uh, John Candy and uh, Maureen O'Hara. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthony Quinn, it was a great cast. And and in the movie, uh, the Ali Sheedy works at, for her father. She uh, she works at a funeral home and she does makeup on dead people. 
and uh, and get some ready for you know. So John Candy is trying to get a date with with this gal, and we were filming that. And you know, I'm never late to to the set. Never ever late. I hate being late. I'm always 15 minutes early. And and that day I got a flat tire. Yeah. And I was like 45 minutes late and going out of my mind. So I, uh, I I had remembered the location more or less where it was from when we did the original scouting. So I'm late. I run in with my car. I, I, I run into the room. I open the doors and I, I see that, okay, I'm late, you know, and the, right. the extras are already in in their suits and everything look facing away from me. You know, the, the extra dead body was on, on, <laughs> on the casket, beautiful golden light on it. So I'm looking and I'm going, God, the lighting department did a really great job. Look at that pink light. It looks great. Uh, and uh, everything's so organized. I'm so glad that all this all happened without me. <laughs> so at the top of my lungs, I go, Guys, this looks great. <laughs> right? At which point everybody on cue turns to me. It turns out that wasn't our set. Oh. It was the real funeral going on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when I saw that and everybody turned and everything everything stopped. And I was like, oh my God. I, I had gone to the wrong wing of the funeral home. Oh my gosh. We were filming on the right. So I went, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It just backed up. <laughs> I, I told Chris Columbus a story and he thought it was so funny and ridiculous that we actually put a scene similar to that in our movie. Yeah. You know, where at the end at the end when John Candy gets the 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 date, he goes outside and goes, Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then they're putting the casket in the in the thing and everybody <laughs> turns to him. So anyway, th that that's the most embarrassing day of my life. That's a that's an absolute great story and uh uh, uh reason enough to be 15 minutes early. That's the <laughs> right right. Anyway, it's it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I find my favorite part of doing a podcast is coming across uh, people like you. Uh, you do an amazing job, obviously, at cinematography, director of photography, but you're almost like a, a, a philosopher and a therapist and a, a renaissance man, to, to use an overused term, um, uh, in your in your worldview. I just find that absolutely fascinating. Well, thank you. I, I hope that, uh, you know, people keep watching movies and keep people keep telling the truth. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You, yeah, communicate directly and honestly, and that 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 tends to work. Yeah, so much fun talking to you today. Thanks so much. You too. Take care. Okay. Till next time. Bye.